Welcome, this is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar, and we are in Puchong. Now, what are we doing here? We are actually talking about making babies. Now, making babies is an interesting topic, but we are going to be talking about IVF, which is in vitro fertilization. Join me, Dishan Kumar, in today's episode. All right, thank you, doctor, for joining us. Uh, we have to talk about, uh, or we have to start actually at the beginning. Uh, how did Metro IVF actually start and uh, what is the whole journey? Why did you think that uh, IVF uh, was needed by couples in Malaysia and how and did you actually see a potential in Malaysia? Uh, thank you for inviting me. Um, IVF, uh, what I call the final treatment for infertile couple, uh, is required by about 3% of the female population. Mm -hmm. In other words, 15% of women in their lifetime was uh, seek advice from the doctor on their difficulty in getting pregnant. Okay. And of this end of it, you have about 3% who actually will require IVF. Now before uh, IVF was available, uh, this couple, example with block tube, they have no chance to get pregnant. And they have to live their life with it and accept with it. And uh, of course, they will uh, find that every time there's a party where there are children, they'll try to avoid and uh, you know, they are, with these IVF facilities, their life is different. You know? As uh, one uh, couple told me once, say, hey, after they got a child, they say, this year, the new year is different. Mm -hmm. Nobody asks again why they have not got a child. So it's a sociological aspect in that world. Yes. So uh, actually, uh, IVF, uh, uh, I started IVF about 20 years ago. Yeah. Uh, before then, I was a practicing obstetrician and gynecologist. And after 10 years, I find there is a lot of patients asking for fertility service. Mm -hmm. And when we give the uh, treatment, which was uh, uh, oral tablets to increase the ovulation, we use IUI, uh, there's still a large group of them who cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1999, uh, okay. delivered in the year 2000. Yes, and we delivered in the year 2000. Okay. Yeah. And uh, four years later, we started to, to add uh, other facilities of uh, ART. Mm. We started to have frozen embryo, mm. and we have our first frozen uh, uh, embryo uh, pregnancy delivered yeah, in uh, 2004. Oh, yeah. And same with it. You see? And uh, uh, lately, uh, we also started to have uh, PGS services, mm -hmm. where we are able to analyze the embryo, mm -hmm. see whether the embryo have any diseases like Down syndrome, before even we transfer the uh, embryo into the woman. Okay. Uh, and this is good for couples where they have uh, a risk of uh, abnormal babies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there a bit of a stigma on people coming for you for treatment? Do you see that in Malaysians like before when they say, because in Malaysia or in Asia in that sense, for, for a person to say there's something wrong with me, is very difficult. Did you find starting out in 1999, was there a lot of patients who like, didn't want to come to you, but then they had to, and was there a lot of fear in that sense? Yes. Um, how they approach us is, they wouldn't tell us exactly that uh, they actually want a child, you know, because they cannot get. Mm. They would say, oh, my period not regular. Hey, doctor, can you check? Uh, is there anything wrong or not? Why is it that the period uh, sometimes this and but yet, you know, I don't get my, uh, mm. uh, what I want. You know? mm -hmm. So in other words, a lot of them uh, do not come forward. Mm. And at that time, most of the time, the people approach us was the woman. Mm. Yeah, they'll come and ask. And when they open up the subject of uh, infertility, we investigate it, and the husband still won't appear. Mm. Only after some few cycles, we say, hey, your husband will come for checkup. Mm. And then only they found that they have no choice, the husband comes up. But I think today is different. Mm. We are seeing even men coming forward and check first mm. uh, before the wife comes forward. Now, IVF, a very interesting process. Uh, doctor, could you actually describe to us what is the whole process of IVF? Uh, for a couple who wants, who comes to you and says, um, I want to do this treatment, uh, and what do they actually go through? Yeah, we explained to them the whole process of IVF uh, consists of about uh, five stages. Okay. Yeah, the first stage is we will give them injection, total about nine injections, certainly two injections at one time, where we will want to have about five to 15 eggs uh, developed mm -hmm. so that we can harvest that number. 
Okay. And this first we call it the ovarian stimulation uh, phase. Okay. So it will last about the first 14 days of the cycle. The second phase is to extract the egg. Uh, then we use a fine needle through the vagina. We take out the egg one by one. And straight away we pass to the embryologist beside. Mm. You know, and the third stage is done by the embryologist. Nothing to do with us, the clinician. Mm. The embryologist will fertilize the egg with the sperm provided by her husband. And then the uh, fourth stage is uh, we will transfer the embryo into the womb. Yeah, and so that is in the best place for implantation. And the last phase is about 14 days where we wait for the embryo to stick on to the uh, endometrium or the uterine lining. Mm -hmm. And then pregnancy will be confirmed with the blood test after 14 days. Okay. Now, doctor, if a couple comes to you for IVF, uh, we have to talk about how much it's going to cost. So, what is the price range currently for IVF treatment in Malaysia? The whole uh, cycle of IVF, from the beginning until they get pregnant, uh, in Malaysia, uh, the price can range between 15000 to about 25000 Yeah, And, uh, of course, if we are doing other uh, extras, for uh, this IVF, example, PGS, well, you... Um, what about couples who can't afford? Uh, the couples who have problems uh, and can't afford, is there any collaborations currently with any government facility or government hospitals? Yes. Um, you see, in the year two, uh, 2008, uh, we were approached by uh, uh, ISTA, there's a uh, hospital bazaar, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, to provide collaborative services. Mm -hmm. You see, they suggested they will, uh, they have a lot of patients actually who seek uh, further treatment. They will treat them on the stimulation and only when it come to the egg pickup, culture, fertilization and transfer, uh, uh, they will come to us for that procedure. And after that, they go back to the uh, client hospital and manage until pregnancy. So in such a situation, Actually, the patient save costs ranging to about uh, paying to about 50 to about 60 percent of the actual cost. Mm, okay. And uh, this collaboration actually uh, help people who uh, marginally can afford uh, IVF. And we actually uh, the first uh, baby uh, was uh, from the collaboration was in year 2009. It was uh, a couple uh, delivered two girls, uh, twins. Twins. Yeah. Okay. So the whole duration of the IVF takes how long? Uh, it's about four weeks. Four weeks? Yes. Okay. And um, what are certain factors that actually can affect uh, a couple to have successful treatment? What are the things that plays a part for a successful treatment? Okay, the success of an IVF is now 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, it varies. Yeah. Uh, first, we look at the patient itself. Yeah. Uh, if the patient's uh, age uh, uh, is very young, for example, 28 years of age, then we can quite confidently say that she has a good chance of getting pregnant, okay. over about 60 to 70 uh, old percent. Whereas a woman at the end of her reproductive life, for example, 40 years and above, her chance is very low. You know, mm -hmm. it sometimes can go out of work uh, 10, 20 percent. Mm -hmm. So age is a very good factor. Second is, I think the, um, the, the motivation and the uh, what call the what the patient does, yeah, uh, during the time when they are doing the IVF. Mm -hmm. So if the patient are more motivated, positive thinking, and they also modulate the lifestyle, then they also can have a high chance of getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. Then on the part of the uh, the lab, uh, well, of course the lab they are uh, more well equipped. They have uh, run many cycles a year, and they have many years of experience and the embryologists are uh, uh, what I call uh, experience, then of course the result is different. And uh, talking about that lifestyle changes, what type of lifestyle changes does one need to do? Let's say if they're going for this treatment, both men and women, the couple need to go through to get a successful treatment. Uh, okay, a uh, woman, uh, let's say they want to uh, go for uh, this IVF, uh, a month or two before that, it's good. They have uh, what call uh, well, I say the word more fertile diet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should avoid uh, diet that has high glucose level. That means high carbohydrate level, mm -hmm. because if they have high carbohydrate level like rice, meat, kway teow, 
then it will affect the glucose insulin uh, metabolism. Yeah, it's not so good for the egg production. Mm -hmm. yeah. In fact, they should take more vegetables, fruits, yeah, that will be better. Have a healthier diet in that sense. Yes, yeah. And at that time, they should not have fluctuation of their weight. Mm -hmm. So that you do not disturb the hormonal uh, uh, balance. Yeah. And for the food, uh, protein food, they should take more food like it's less oily. Fish, la, mm. chicken, la, mm. egg white, this is a better food. Mm. Then to take a lot of uh, you know, uh, oily, oily food, it's not so good. Now, IVF is a very, very positive uh, treatment. Uh, it gives uh, couples who can't have kids um, actually a chance to have children. But with every procedure or every treatment, there are side effects. So, doctor, could you actually go through with us the risks or side effects of IVF? Okay, the risk of IVF, let's say we go back 20 years ago. Okay. Yeah. IVF uh, was new. Yeah. So we are using a lot of drugs and some of the drugs were called uh, ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Okay. Where the ovary get overstimulated and they produce too many eggs. Mm. And when they produce too many eggs, they also have a lot of uh, water accumulated in the body in the third space. Mm. Uh, basically what happens is the whole body is bloated with water. Mm. Uh, so that is quite risky to them. And uh, mild cases are quite common. It can be well treated. Moderate cases can be easily be treated. It's only the severe cases. And of course, uh, with the new medication that's available now, uh, it hardly occurs now. Okay. And the other um, side effect that uh, we have uh, in IVF is multiple pregnancy. Mm. So if you were to transfer uh, four, five, six embryos, then you may have a risk of triplets, quadruplets now. Uh, but it is not practice now to transfer that number. The standard practice is now to transfer one, two. Mm. And if the patient has a recurrence or failure, failure, sometimes we have to transfer three. Mm. Otherwise, uh, the risk of this uh, multiple pregnancy, like triplets, quadruplets, hardly occur now. Mm. The most is twins. Yeah. All right, uh, we have to talk about um, your oldest patient in Metro IVF. Uh, uh -huh. The oldest person to go through an uh, IVF procedure using their own How old was your patient? Oh, this lady uh, we had uh, uh, was uh, 46 years old. Yeah. Um, it's actually the oldest uh, woman who uh, uh, delivered uh, through IVF, yeah, uh, using her own egg. Yeah. It was the year uh, 2013. Mm -hmm. Actually, she was actually managed in a hospital in UK. Uh, she was working there for 20 years. And then she was looking for a place to uh, do IVF. And it was during, I think, um, around Christmas time when she took a holiday. And she came and did IVF with us. Mm. Yeah. And uh, that lady, um, we only managed to obtain one embryo. Mm. Yeah. And uh, two days later, there was four cells. Uh, the journey was, first of all, uh, we, to we told her she has uh, four follicles and uh, she was so happy. So when we harvested, we have four eggs. Mm. And when we fertilize, you have only one embryo. So there's an up and down, you know. Mm. And she looked a bit down. So we transferred for her, you know. And then two days later, she said, okay, thank you. She go off, you know. So she, anyway, she was a very positive woman. She, she planned everything. And uh, two weeks later, she texted us and said she's pregnant. And she took one year leave from her work. She said, I will never have get this chance again. Yeah, that's, yeah. True. that's true. And she delivered a baby, and it was a baby girl. We're happy for her. All right. All right, doctor. I think, uh, final question, your advice uh, as a medical professional to couples who actually want uh, to conceive or want to have children but have been trying for some time, what should they do? Okay. If you are still uh, in the age of 35 and below, try, you yeah. Do time in the course. Always remember, uh, if you do on the first one week, it will not have any effect. Yeah. In the middle, day 12 to day 15, have uh, sexual intercourse. Mm -hmm. You are trying for one year, you still cannot get in. Seek your doctor treatment early. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and then the doctor assess, most of the time, 90% of the time, you'll find that there is some factor in either the husband or the woman that make them cannot get pregnant. Mm -hmm. You get treated, you should get pregnant. Only a third of this couple really need to do ARP to achieve pregnancy. So, see your doctor early. 
All right. Thank you, Doctor, so much for your time. Oh, thank you, Doctor.